Yay! Welcome, welcome, replay viewers. Welcome to Tuesday Talks with Mel. I am Melissa Alts, and I'm super excited that you are joining me for an interview with the fabulous Leslie Boyd Bradley. So I would love to know where you're watching from. If you want to comment with the hashtag Tuesday Talks Replay, tell me where you're coming from and leave me your favorite animal emoji just for funsies. That will be fabulous. And speaking of funsies, before we have live viewers really coming on here, Tori wants to give the secret word. What is the secret word for this week? Watermelon. Watermelon. All right. Okay. That will make more sense later. Thanks, Tortor. Um, that uh, secret word will come into play at the end of the broadcast. So make sure that you stick with us uh, so that you don't miss out on any of the fun. We have a really special giveaway. What? Can I no. No, uh, yes, I'll call you for the game. Um, we have a really special, special broadcast. Hi, Joanne. I see you on here. I'm so excited. Victoria, can you please get Lexi and put her in her kennel? I'm so sorry. I had totally put her away before we started. Somebody let her out of the kennel. Please go put her away. All the way. Take her. Oh, sorry, guys. All right. So welcome to all the live stream viewers on YouTube. We're so glad that you could make it here live. Remember, you can give a thumbs up and uh, leave me cute emoji comments and interact. Hi, Randy. Welcome, welcome. And then remember, as we go throughout the broadcast, what makes a live really special and fun is the fact that you can interact. We can see um, your comments. Hi, Liesl. Or I can see your comments and I'll relay things to uh, Leslie. And uh, really, the more you interact with us, ask questions, tell us your thoughts, what you like, what's like really getting you excited, the better we can make the show. So um, we love hearing all of your feedback. And then, hi, Heather. And then at any point, if you've got a question for the fabulous LBB, you can text LBB to 833-730-2906 and that will actually let you submit your um, question so that I'll be able to see it. I wanted to make sure there's a bit of a delay between us and you and uh, this way I can see your questions and we are going to have a lot of fun with that. So let's get rolling. I see that this is really heating up. You guys must be excited. I don't see, I see a lot of you here. I don't see a lot of you getting excited. So if you are, uh, I don't see evidence of it, I guess. So if you are excited to hear everything that the fabulous LBB has to share with us today and learn new things about her, I learned three different things about her that I had no idea while we were just prepping for this. Um, you're going to get to see facets of her expertise and experience that just haven't necessarily come up in uh, previous uh, positions that she has had before she retired. Um, hi, Arlene. Is it, let's see. Arlevin. Arlevin? Am I saying your name right? I hope I am. That's beautiful. Hi, Shauna. Jennifer. Welcome, welcome. And then don't forget, I can actually... Go ahead and I could highlight you and put you up here. If you hear Leslie or on some offhand chance me say something that like really resonates with you or you want to interact with us, comment and we can actually um, bring you kind of up with us and uh, interact directly like that. So you could be a little superstar on here and then feel free to share. Oh, I know. Saprinka. I love her too. I'm so excited for this. I'm really, it's really going to be a good, good, good time. All right. Now, LBB, I don't know if you can hear this or not. She is in my broadcast studio right now. Hi, Roxanne, but I can't see her. So um, I want to make sure that all is well. All right. So text alerts just went out. Everybody who asked for a reminder just got sent it. And Yes, she does. Oops. Hello, Roxanne. Welcome. My little comment I was going to show skipped away. It's the best energy and is so motivating. Absolutely. If you are excited, please give me some fire emoji because LBB is going to bring the fire. We're going to have a great time while I am working on. Let's see. I'm like, <laughs> we were in here. <laughs> She's hiding from me for a moment. Okay. So, yes. Steady fire emoji, if you are excited about this, we are going to be going over, yay, Jennifer says she's bringing the fire. You can hear me. Okay, Leslie, but I can't see you. 
try joining on that link I sent you again. Okay, she's here. She's for sure here. Yay, Jennifer says fire. Betsy is showing the fire. Becky is bringing the fire. Joanne and Gina and Liesl, Roxanne, Amanda. Everybody's super excited. This is going to be fire. So good. LBB, just hop back in on that link one more time because I can't see you. I just want to make sure we're good. Okay. Okay. I'm going to, while I wait for her to come back on, on, on the link, to re-click the link and come back in, uh, here's some fun things that we are going to go over with the fabulous LBB. All right. Uh, you don't see me either. <laughs> That's the best. She's like, I don't see me either. Okay, click the link. You know what? Yes, okay, she disappeared. She's gonna come back on fire. All right, we're gonna be good now. It's my fault. I'm using an amazing software, but there is a bit of a, yay! She is here. Who's ready for LBB? Are you ready? I'm ready. All the fires. All right, you guys, this is gonna be really good. Share this with your friends and those who are in any way the kind of people who are on a journey, they are becoming, whether it's in business, in um, their personal life, if they are just people who, like, they're going somewhere, this is something they are going to want to be a part of. I'm shutting this door because my precious son is just giggling away at his YouTube video. All right, it's time. And those of you who have known LBB for a while, you're gonna know what this means. Who's getting excited? You know what's about to happen, right? We're gonna sing her in. We're gonna need some more fire, y'all. We're gonna need some hearts. Ready? Ready? Woo! Who's excited? That's right. magic in the air. Okay, I made enough of a fool of myself. <laughs> That's half the fun. All right, we're gonna take one more second, y'all. Tell her hi. Tell her how much you've missed her. Oh, you're so excited to hear from her. That's right. Woo! All right. We're gonna five, four, come on, two, and one. All right. I don't know about you, Leslie. I could dance forever. Yeah, me oh. too. <laughs> we're going to jump right in. Who's excited to see LBB? If you are so excited to see her here, go ahead and send up some hearts. There are going to be people who do not know how awesome she is, and we want all of them to get to experience the magic too. Wow. So, Leslie, thank you so much for being here with me today. Absolutely. Hi, everybody. So glad to be with you too. Um, for uh, as a business and in my life that I uh, haven't seen you all in so long, it's just so great to be able to connect. Super, super exciting. I have a fancy little uh, overlay for you. <laughs> all the stops. Although I didn't think about, I need to put a, a thing behind it next time so you can see it better. But there we go. All right. So we are going to start out. We're going to dive right in. I see so many comments. Can you see all the... Oh, I can, I can see the chat. I've got yeah. Facebook pulled up on another screen. So I'm that okay. was a good idea. That way you'll, you'll actually see some of them before I do even. Okay. Yay. Yay. Okay. So we are going to go through several different really fun segments with Leslie. We're going to do something. This is not your average training. We're going to go a completely different direction and have some serious fun. If the um, dance and sing in wasn't a uh, hint enough. So. I thought it would be really fun. We are going to start out, and I'm going to ask Leslie to tell us three things. Three <clears throat> things that those of us who have met her within the last five years or so might not know about her. And then for those who are reconnecting with Leslie from uh, previous 
uh, businesses and corporate jobs and all the different areas because she has done so much in her life. Uh, three things that those who are from five to 10 years ago might not know about her. So without okay. further ado, yeah. you can start with either one. Okay, um, three things in the last five years. Uh, not that you might not know it, but um, I have been busy building the personal development side of my business. I got John Maxwell certified. I got DISC behavioral styles certified. So I'm certifiable, <laughs> basically. <laughs> yeah, hello. Um, second thing, don't hate me. I've lost 15 pounds. Um, it's all relative. Okay, I'm, gonna, I'm glad you prefaced it with don't hate me because I'm not gonna lie. I did have the- Don't oh, hate well. me. I didn't found them. This COVID pandemic stuff worked the reverse on me. Um, but so has just life in general, uh, just been so busy. And I don't eat much when people say, how did you lose it? My husband will say she doesn't eat. So I, when I do eat, I try to eat healthy, but yeah. Um, awesome. yeah well, that kind of feeds into though, the, uh, part of the reason I lost is, okay, go through menopause because that will start, uh, for me anyway, I started losing weight. Um, get, get, have shoulder surgery, then have hip replacement that lost another five and then move and change your whole life. I lost another five. Now it works differently with different people, but that's how it worked. You on know me. what? I mm -hmm. think, I think, I think I'll keep my 15 for now, just based on the shoulder and the hip surgery. Hello. And I will not begrudge you your lost 15 because you earned that. I did earn it and it's been the hard way, but I guess I'm just letting you know that it is possible. Wow. It doesn't have to be 15 up. It can be 15 down. I like that. And I've chosen to stay there. So I'm working hard at doing that. Yeah, you do. Um, I also, in the last five years, I co-authored a book um, yeah. called The Change. And I know we'll talk a little bit more about that later. But yes, see. I don't know about y'all, but did you know that Leslie had co-authored a book? I didn't. I know. It, well, you know, I didn't advertise it a ton, Mel, and I didn't really utilize it like I could have at the time, but I'll probably be using it more going forward as I start to build on some new business ventures, which are coming up. Sneak peek. <laughs> spoiler. Uh -huh, spoiler alert. Okay. Some tantalizing little thing right there. All right. Mm -hmm. And how about five things um, that like we wouldn't, we wouldn't know if we had met you in the last five years some, uh, from before? Well, more recent things. Um, I did retire from my uh, most recent or last corporate position. Um, and that was in January 1st of this year. Some people thought I was retiring from life. I didn't. <laughs> Just retired from that position. Um, onward to the next adventure, right? I uh, sold our house. We bought a new house, and we're up here in Northern California now in an area called El Dorado Hills. So we're now about 15 minutes from my daughter, which yeah. is the third reason um, of something new that's happened, and that's that we have a new grandbaby. So many who say, Oh, congratulations. Being a grandma is so great. I've been a grandma for 16 years now. I have a 16 year old and a 14 year old grandsons that we had the blessing of being able to live close to when they grew up. And now my daughter, our daughter is starting her family life up here. Her husband's a firefighter. So not a lot of choices where you're going to live. So she was going to be up here and we just thought, why not? Uh, let's take our roots up and move up north. So we're in Northern California. And again, we've got, I've got, you know, exciting business ventures coming up in the very near future. Very, very near, near future. Stay <laughs> tuned. Y'all, don't click away. Gotta know what's coming next. All right. That was super fun. A nice, fun little catch up. All right. So now we're going to go into the next super fun segment. I asked Leslie if she would for those of us that know like maybe a, a piece of what she's done to give us kind of like not so much her highlight reel as much as like her overview of like what like have you done we only have seen like small facets of the awesomeness that is you tell us like all the things but you know i'm gonna be demanding it and be like in two minutes 
<laughs> Ready, set, go. Life in two. Okay. Um, it's pretty simple. Uh, and I think you're talking about my adult life and career life. And literally, I was a professional ballet dancer for a lot of my life. And Where are needed to step, needed, huh? yeah, Where are most. I was, um, I would say my greatest accomplishment was I uh, danced with Stuttgart Ballet in Stuttgart, Germany, which was re is a renowned ballet company. So I did get to live my dream. I had done it since I was eight years old on. So it was a real opportunity to culminate that dream. And while I was dancing and at about 18 years old, I joined the direct selling business. I was born into direct sales. My mom and dad have been in direct sales all of my life. And um, in Tupperware, that's really where my career began. And I um, literally got good at what I do. And I think that's the best advice I could give to anyone in any business that you're doing. First of all, you have to be passionate about it um, because passion is critical. It's the people, the product and the plan. But that fourth P is passion. You need to be super passionate about it. I don't care what it is, um, whether it's direct sales or not. You gotta love what you do. Um, Anyway, I was passionate about plastic. People find that hard to believe. But when you've got plastic in your blood <laughs> and you're born in a bowl, it makes it pretty easy to know how to love it. So anyway, I, I was blessed to have direct selling parents because that's an entrepreneurial spirit. And it, it certainly was raised in me and embedded in me in all that I did. A hard work ethic, a stick to itiveness a never say die, um, do it even when you don't feel like it, all the things that go along with being a good, hard worker. Um, I don't wanna say it's generational because I do believe that every generation has its hard working ethic. I just think that, that the newer generations are spread a lot thinner. And, so, and there's so many more demands in uh, a, oh my gosh, right now you've got to be a teacher too. Are you kidding me? I mean, there's just so much that, uh, <laughs> that yeah, that, that women have to do. It's, it's amazing to me. So I was blessed with um, this opportunity and got good at what I did and then went off and danced in Germany. And when I came back, I joined my parents in their very successful Tupperware franchise and helped them build and grow. And then when my mother moved on to become, um, she was very high ranking in the corporate direct selling world as a vice president of sales all over the Tupperware world and president of sales in the Tupperware world that I was able to follow in her footsteps to a degree. She was like and royalty, essentially. She, she, I mean, when it comes to absolutely direct selling and women in business, my goodness to me, she ranks right up there. And, um, the same with others, hundreds and thousands of others. So I walked that foot, I walked her path and uh, joined the corporate world after I'd established myself um, with my husband by having a, a top selling franchise and became a vice president with Tupperware. And then went on to be a vice president of sales with several other companies after I left Tupperware. And most recently was the vice president of personal development with Senegence International which is where I think, yeah. Um, and my heart is always still there. Um, you got to stay looking good. And this is 64 year old. And good. Hello, hello. looking good. good. And literally, I think, best makeup and skincare products on the planet. So again, I was passionate about it, made it easy to do. And now just looking towards what's next. I've always enjoyed motivational speaking. I've always enjoyed coaching. Um, helping others become successful themselves in their own way, not trying to um, <sighs> duplicate, but not, I guess, replicate, but not duplicate. I'm not sure what word I'm looking for That's exactly. That's actually my favorite saying. I'm so glad you said that. Yes. Well, it's true though, Mel, isn't it? Because you want to, just like with following my mother's footsteps, hmm. I followed her path, but I couldn't feel her footsteps. So I had to, I had to, I did what she did, but I did it my own way, which she encouraged me to do. And I know she's watching right now. So love you. so <laughs> well, an amazing human. I want to know you. Well, um, you know what? I've got to give duo credit to my father as well, because um, my mother said she never worked in business without my dad right by her side. And the best my father ever did was how well he supported my mother in everything that she did. He gave all the glory, he gave all the 
the support, everything he could do to make my mom be her best. But I've got my sense of humor from my dad. I got um, a lot of the empathetic and lovey, touchy-feely side from my dad. I got a lot of my business and acumen from my mother. So I'll say it. It's, the it's, in the even blend? Even though I've worn it out, the beauty's in the blend. <laughs> oh, I felt it coming. I'm so, <laughs> you feel it what, coming? I know. I know. We had a great uh, question pop up here while okay. I pull up our notes for our next piece here. Can you answer that one? That's a great question. What question am I looking at? Oh, I'm sorry. It says, not business related, but I'd love to know your favorite production you've ever been a part of. I was like, that is a great question. Oh my gosh. Favorite production I've ever been a part of. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, what do they mean by favorite production? What am I missing? Uh, I think this this is from back when we were talking about ballet. Oh, Okay. Oh, goodness. Okay. I'm just going to tell you from the age of eight to 18 for 10 years, I probably danced every role the Nutcracker could ever have offered. In fact, my sister throws up when I say the word Nutcracker. <laughs> I take it was not just a few Every one of those. <laughs> But I did it from being a child in the opening scene to being Clara to being uh, every one oh of the soloist roles there could be. Um, and then, of course, I think when I moved to Germany and got to work with the Munich Opera Ballet and then got to be with Stuttgart, it was a whole different level, whole different experience. And um, pictures and stuff was, from from that from that time period. Uh, say it again. Do you have pictures and stuff like that from that time period? OK, don't make me feel really old, OK? Well, I don't mean that they wouldn't exist. I just know from when I, I just, traveled the world in 2001. And I, no, we didn't take pictures like that I, back then. We, we weren't digital. Like, I do know. You have, I know. Do you have them where you can like scan them in? No, um, but I thought about seeing if I don't. I don't even know how to find anything about. It. Isn't that terrible? But well, yeah. you yeah. happen to know a couple of young, uh, hu young-ish humans who are like super sleuths. I'm thinking of a couple people right now that I'm like, I bet if they're out there. I bet Elizabeth Walters could find them. I'll tell you something really fun. When um, I was with Senegens, one of our distributors' husbands said, you know, I worked with the um, backstage crew of Stuttgart Ballet back in the day. He said, what years were you there? And I told him, he said, I think I was there when you were dancing. So isn't that just crazy? No, we really? like, oh my gosh, is that even possible? So I don't know, and I can't remember whose husband it was. So yeah, hello. We're, anyway. we're all, we're, we're voluntolding Elizabeth Walters to help us track down pictures <laughs> from Leslie's ballet career. Like if, if they're can, out, I'd love to see them too. That so. can find them. She can find <laughs> anything true. about anyone ever. She can, that's <laughs> true. That, hello. That was just for Elizabeth. Okay. Right. That's just for her. <laughs> all right. So here is our next fun little thing that we're going to do. Um, yeah. we are going, Leslie and I are going to have a Q and a lightning round with each other. Okay. The fun thing about LBB and I is that we uh, have completely, well, we have overlap, but completely different skill sets. I want to know all the things in her brain. And now currently, because of everything going on in the world, she's like delving into the world of online business in a way that like you really haven't needed to before, right? When you asked me earlier uh, what, what I thought was the biggest obstacles I faced as a woman in business. Mm -hmm. Re um, earliest was when I had my daughter because I owned my own Tupperware company at the time. Um, and she was six weeks premature. She was colicky for six months and screamed for six months. Um, and I, and I, I had, um, oh God, what's it called? After you have a child and you go into a depression. Postpartum depression. Thank you. I had postpartum and didn't know it. Didn't know what it was. I mean, 31 years ago, they had no clue what postpartum was. Mm -hmm. So I was thrown into this whole different world of being somebody's mom, of having a business to run, of postpartum, of all these horrible things, blessings and horrible things all at the same time. So that was my biggest challenge during that day and that time. Recently, the biggest challenge is technology. I am not a tech person. And I mean, I'm, I'm not horrible, but I'm not good. So when it comes to anything technology, like I had to ask Mel, 
how do people get into this today? How do they see what's going on? My mom wants to join. How does she do it? <laughs> it's like, hello. It's, it's guilty of, of not knowing what you don't know or knowing what you don't know even worse. So I don't, I really know what I don't know. And that's what I need to find out. So honestly, having Mel re-enter my life in this way with all of her technology acumen and my gosh, she's a guru of all of this. <laughs> it just is a blessing for me because it's so not my jam. Hello. Super fun. Well, yeah. for those who are just coming on right now, uh, we're after our fun little lightning round. I'm going <clears> to <throat> dive in with Leslie and really um, kind of like dig around in her head and, and ask her all the things that, you know, about things, questions like, you know, what have been your biggest challenges? Although we've covered that one. Um, but like are they the other things that like, I want to, I want to know the like, the stuff. Be careful. It's remember. a scary, it's a scary <laughs> place to go. <laughs> I can't, I, you couldn't, you couldn't make me believe that for a second. You could try, it's but it wouldn't so work. Warning. So warning. So <laughs> warning. <laughs> but, um, I think I'm really, I'm really super excited about that, but we're going to get started here with, it is all, you guys are so sweet. Look at that. You're just the sunshine brightening my day. Oh, cut it out. Heather, thank Aww. you. Love you. Yeah, you guys. And Joanne, Mel is fantastic. You're right. Aww. She is. Thank you so much. All right. Who's ready for our lightning round before we get to all the rest of the fun? If you are ready for lightning, for our lightning round, What's going to the way that, first of all, if you're ready and you're excited to see what kind of craziness I've cooked up in the 15 minutes before we went live, we it, like literally we were just talking and I was like, we should do a lightning round. So we're going to do it. So throw me some lightning emojis in the comments if you're excited to see what kind of craziness happens in the next three minutes, three or four minutes. If I could find that emoji, I would send it to you. <laughs> <laughs> I would. I would. I promise. And, and and if you cannot find the lightning, it looks like a Harry Potter bolt. But if you can't find it, you may send fire because we love fires too. Oh, All right, fires, good. fires are great. I have my timer here, and Thanks. we are going to trade off. And in, I'm, I'm going to give us like five minutes. So we're going to see how many questions we can ask the other. And literally, you guys. Oh, Sarah, I see. So wow, there's a lot. That's a lot of lightning, y'all. Y'all keep bringing the lightning. Um, I'm going to ask what's on my mind. And then if you guys have questions that you think I should be asking or you think Leslie should be asking, throw them in the comment because if we if we go, uh, 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 we can always steal one of yours. Um, we have 15 seconds to answer these questions. Um, and I use a lot of words. So I don't know how this is going to go, but it's going to be really interesting. You know, these two I behavioral styles, having to do something like that fast is going to be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it won't be boring. That's for sure. Okay. All right. Are you going to start or should I? You start. All right. I should have probably thought of what my first question would be. <laughs> Me too. I didn't. Okay. Right. Here, oh, I got to start the timer. All right. Okay. Uh, I started after I finish saying it. Okay. I'm making up the rules as I go along. Okay. okay. So have you ever, if you have ever had a moment where you knew that you needed to jump, but you were really scared, how did you get past that? I find that when you're afraid to do something, the best thing to do is take a couple of deep breaths because the minute you take a couple of deep breaths, it kind of can get the fear out of your brain. Fear in your brain is really what can paralyze you. You're thinking about it too much. You're letting all the what ifs happen. So get rid of the what ifs. And I hate to say, just do it. I sound like Nike, but just do it. Don't think about it. Just jump. And that's not everybody's behavioral style. You'll have to force yourself. That's right. All right. We did pretty good on that. All right. Okay, great. Your turn. Okay. Um, if you had to pick one technology idea that you would share with somebody in this environment that would get them the most exposure to their business right now, what tip would that be or what platform would that be? Click funnels, without a doubt, because I can you can do literally anything with it. Once you conquer it, it is kind of a beast. It's the only thing that's ever made me cry, but it was so worth pushing through because I use it every day for everything on every social media platform. It's literally the glue that holds my business together. And it's the thing that I am most passionate about teaching other people to use. Oh, this is fun. 15 seconds goes really fast. It does. <laughs> well, I should look back at the comments. 
Are you guys like this? You guys like it? Yay. Oh, look at that. Okay. All right. If you guys think of questions, throw them out. Okay. Um, Leslie, if you could go back and tell 16 year old Leslie Boyd. Mm -hmm. Okay, duh, it is um, hyphenated. Okay. <laughs> I, I didn't think to ask that. If you could go back and you could tell 16 year old Leslie Boyd two, oh, this is 15 seconds, one thing, one key, and it doesn't have to be deep and meaningful, but it can be, can be whatever, even if it's buy stock in something or anything. If you could tell yourself one thing, what would it be? Learn to shine the light on others. <gasps> I I was very much a um, and still am I hate to say but I am a spotlight. Oh, horror is not a good word. <laughs> I love. I'm right there with you. <laughs> I'm terrible. But I, I, I am. I mean, I used to stand on a diving board. My mom will attest and say, "Is everybody watching?" Like back when I was a little girl, and it was all about watching me. And if I could go back, I would say it's more important to shine the light on others. And you, I, I hate to say maturity teaches you that, but it does. And the immature me wanted all the attention. The mature me wants to give it all away. I love that. Yay. Okay, your turn. Okay. Um, oh, gosh. Okay, so Mel, being locked up at home with your kids right now um, and trying to run a business at the same time, what is the best tip that you can give to the other moms out there that are trying to balance it all? Grace, grace, and more grace. Mm -hmm. You will be okay. Your kids will be okay. Your business will be okay. But what's most important right now is that you and your kids are okay. You can make up any, any dip as long as you and your home is intact. And like in the moments where you can go, go. But like, don't hesitate to step away because uh, like that's irreplaceable. Okay, can I add on to that? Go for it. All right, because I think we can also tag each other a little bit here. Uh, we're making up our own game so we can do it. We are. Doing. So I made a new rule. I'm tagging. Okay. Um, I also believe that you do need to be super present. Um, make sure because your kids are home and the demands are going to be greater. You truly do need to, depending on your behavior style, um, some of you are going to want to compartmentalize your time, which is great to do. The word I like to use in this kind of environment or actually any time is structured flexibility. You, you've got a structure that you're working within, but be flexible within that structure. Um, if you have segmented a certain time period for work and life takes over because Billy is sick or, or Bobby needs your attention right now, Put your work on hold for five minutes and go give that attention. Then reward positive behavior. And when the kids are behaving well while you're doing your work time, reward that because that's what teaches them to respect your time as well. And now that you are forced to work out of your home, you aren't able to necessarily go elsewhere. You need to create the kind of work environment that the kids will respect. And in, in so you need to respect their needs as well. That's right. So just try to, I don't know if it's balance. I think it's more harmony than anything. Yes. All my, <clears throat> all the things, all the things. All right. Uh, do I ask you or do you ask me? Where are we at? Does anybody remember? Uh, let me ask you because okay. I think, or do you ask me? I don't know. I tagged on oh. yours. I think that's okay. okay. It says, and I don't know who this is for, so I'm just going to ask you. Okay. Uh, Danielle is asking, what is your favorite routine thing you do every day? We could both answer that, but you can start. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah, you guys can go in and we'll both, we'll both answer them. All right. Um, I have a very early morning routine when I first get up. I uh, It sounds so cheesy to say, but I read my Bible and I meditate and I do a little bit of physical activity and I make a list with check marks because I have the brain of a squirrel. So if it's not on my, and I have literally thousands of notes in my phone. Um, you don't need to actually see what they are, but uh, <laughs> literally uh, you can't see anyways, but they're check boxes through my notes program. Uh, because if it's not on my checklist, it probably ain't happening. How about you, Leslie? Um, I would say get unstuck is a good daily routine. I mean, I think this pandemic has put people in a stuck mode in some cases, and you're trying to figure out how to get unstuck. Set an alarm every morning. 
I wasn't doing that for a while. And seriously, I was on the oddest schedule, 2 a.m. to 10 a.m. Just, just really weird schedule because the pandemic was allowing it. <clears throat> mm -hmm. There's a lot to be learned during this isolation period. And I think one of the things we need to learn is that it's great that we have the flexibility, but don't let it take over your day. You do need to have some structures in place. So get up, get dressed, and put on your makeup every day. Now, my husband's probably laughing because he knows I don't do that every day, but it's my <laughs> recommendation. Do as I say, not as I do. No, but I really do think it's mm -hmm. critically important. You know what? I'll share this with you. Get made up for your husband. Get made up for your significant other. I know you can think it doesn't matter, but you know what? I, it hit me one day when I put on makeup and my husband said, oh, are you going live? And I went, oh, wow. That means I'm not looking nice for you. Only when I'm going live, that's crummy. So <clears throat> I thought, no, I need to start taking care of myself for him and looking good for him. I'm going gonna, I'm I'm gonna to jump in and I'm going to tell you guys a secret. You yeah. and Leslie. Okay. Actually, there are some people that know this, but um, I actually put on my makeup at night a lot more often than I put on my makeup during the day. <laughs> and I never actually look quite, you guys, uh, none of my selfies during the day look quite as hot um, because I just throw it together. But I will say um, we like each other a lot more than most people. So it's, you know, and uh, my makeup is skincare. So that's okay. <laughs> And you know, you're bringing up a good point though, too. Make time for each other away from the kids. Um, even if you, you know, if you've got old enough kids, one can be in charge and you get in the car and run away from home for a half an hour and just drive to a park and hold hands and talk away from the kids. I think the hardest part about this forced family time, the good and the bad, the good is that you have great family time. The bad is you don't have a lot of personal time together and you need to create that that date night atmosphere has got to be there sometime. So you need to create it. You need to get creative in how you do it. And have fun, have fun in everything you're doing at home. Yes, try not to make things drudgery or, oh, now I, you know we've got to do the school thing. Now we've got to do that. You don't got to do anything. You get to do. And you get to do it together with the people you love most in your life, your family. So that's right. Make it fun. Bring the fun. Put on the music. I even said the other day I couldn't figure out why I hated cooking so much. Well, then I put music on while I was cooking. I felt so much better. Leslie, so I was I, yes. Okay. Now, I used to get really stressed out at dinner time. Uh, I want to say... Oh, when my 14 year old was young. And then I discovered the most interesting thing. If I put up the baby gates and I poured a glass of wine and put on music, suddenly making dinner was my favorite freaking thing to do in the entire world. I was like, who knew? Who knew? Wine and music, man. It can, it can, it can do a lot. So All just right. find ways to make it fun and bring the fun, right? Right. Yeah, that's right. I'll call you when it's time, babe. Uh, you you said something. You said make time to get unstuck. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was part of your routine. Yes. What does that look like? Okay, mine is like yours, Mel. It's early morning. When I wake up in the morning, I first thing I do, please don't jump on Facebook first thing in the morning when you wake up. And I think it's, or social media, I think it's a mistake that everybody makes. Um because it'll suck your time away and suck your day away and suck you into things that don't really need your time and attention. I recommend filling your soul and filling your heart. I personally read, and, and this is not to be religious on you or anyone. I know, I feel weird saying it. I know, but Jesus speaking is what I read every single morning. It's short, it's quick, it fills me up, it gives me focus and gives me, I think what we need most right now and that's hope. I think we all need to be more hopeful because when you're hopeful, it's easy to continue to move forward. When you have no hope, you just slide back. So you need to be hopeful so you can continue to move forward. So I don't care what you pick, if it's a John Maxwell, if it's an Anthony Robbins, if it's a LBB, hello, um, if it's whatever it might be, read something, listen to something, fill your heart and your mind with something that, that will get you propelled forward for the day and fuels your fire. So good. I honestly feel like um, uh, becoming somebody, and, and I am not a, um, I'm not a, a very rigid or legalistic kind of person. So it, it looks less like what would be a routine to somebody else. And for me, it's just, it's, it's just a, a 
time where I'm like, what do I need? What does like my soul need? I need to fill up before the world depletes and my kids yeah. don't like that as me um, because none of us can go anywhere. Uh, so it might be different from day to day, but yeah. I'll tell you what else can help though too. I think Most of my getting, problems come from that. How about you? I think getting, you know, also what helps is every morning I go outside and mm -hmm. have my protein drink or whatever. I get outside, I get, so I've got so much color. I get a little bit of sunshine, no. only 10 minutes a day. So I'm, I'm being safe and I've got my face protected. But um, 10 minutes a day, I sit outside in the morning. Um, I read my, my whatever's going to fill your heart and soul. I drink my drink, I get some sunshine. I plant my feet on the ground in the grass and just get a little bit rooted. I, I think all of that, and I mean bare oh, I feet in the that. grass, if you can, and you know, look up at the sun and just let it fill you up a bit. I think being in touch with nature um, can help nurture. So get, really yourself, get yourself back in touch and let it just fill you up enough so that you can move on with your day to whatever you have to do. But you've got that fill of what makes you feel good so that you've set the tone, you set the aura, you get unstuck to be able to continue to move forward. So good. And I honestly, I think that there have been times where I've went two or three days without studying foot outside. I know. I know. And I couldn't figure out what was like really wrong with me until like I went for a walk and I was like, oh, so I need to make that a part of mine. It is. Right. And I, there's things that you know maybe fuel you. I, for me, it used to be seeing the ocean and now we live very far away from it. But Lake Folsom is very close by. So we're going to, you know, find ways to whatever fills you, whatever feeds you, whatever fuels you, you need to stay in touch with on a daily basis. And if it's sun with sunrise and sunset, if it's the water, if it's the earth, whatever grounds you and can fill you organically, I guess is a way to put it, um, is what's going to keep you unstuck and keep you hopeful. That's awesome. Well, I love how our lightning round is actually uh, taking us better places than me sitting and trying to like uh, construct an interview possibly could. So we're going to keep lightning rounding into this for a little bit more. Um, okay. Because like, yeah, people are loving this. Uh, Christina's like, this is good stuff. <laughs> Kathy says what fuels you continue it. That's so good. Oh, I just have to say, this is my, this is my aunt Angela. I love you. Hi, Aunt Angela. Hi, Aunt Angela. How are you? <laughs> Becky shared. I do my Rachel Hollis start today journal. That is awesome. That's a great yeah. one too. Well, motivation for your day to stay focused on things that are important. Absolutely. Hope and faith. Yes. Oh, and then Becky was throwing out there. Okay, that's great. That's that's fine. Just they're they're good. They they ring the bell, but then they just. Do the things. <laughs> Ain't life grand. Control. <laughs> Tom, thank you. Listen, my what? dog's been quiet this morning. I think I was I've got lucky. <laughs> That's right. He's giving my husband. Close the door. <laughs> no. Um. Okay. So. Let's see. Uh, oh, I know what. Uh, it's my turn to ask a question on the lightning round. Okay. If you guys are getting a lot from this, throw us some yellow hearts in the and comments. And if not, lie to us. <laughs> no, don't do that. That would be bad. Do you know that never in Cal? Okay, so I'm from California, moved to Texas 15 years ago, and like there's um, a, a sweetness here that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I was very unfamiliar with. Oh. And I had never in my life seen anybody tell anybody a baby was pretty when it wasn't. And I remember being in church and being like, God's going to strike you dead, woman. What are you saying? That that child looks like a fumbled football. You said <laughs> it's precious because it's precious. You say, oh, mama, you did good because she done good. But you don't say a baby is pretty when it's not. So, um. Yeah, don't tell us that you're get if you're you're loving it if you're not. And for the love of all that's holy, y'all, we can get creative with what we say. There we go. So I remember, and you know, my face tends to show what's in my brain. I've gotten a lot better at it as I've gotten older. But um, the worst I is that it's all over my face all the time. Yeah, like I know. Not good. All right. So yay! Oh, lots and lots and lots. <laughs> Uh, I'm cracking people up over here with the the the, the ugly baby comments. So yes, many hearts. Yeah. Ooh, Brenda on YouTube 
says, uh, find your fuel to something and be fabulous. That's right. Find your fuel to be fabulous. All right. So I have, oh, there she goes. She's like, she's like, ah, to fill, find your fuel to fill and be fabulous. That's right, Brenda. All right. So my next question, uh, in the lightning round is for, is for Leslie, of course, because there's nobody else here, but that came out of my mouth. Before. Um, I caught it. And, um, so we all we, like something that has been on my mind a lot is I know that when you're looking to go to the next level, uh, the people that you surround yourself with are yeah. like, they have a great influence on how far you go, how fast you go, all those kinds of things. What would you say to somebody who looks around and realizes, and this is not me, so do not read it and think I'm saying this about me, anybody. I would not. Um, but when they look around and realize that they're the furthest along or they're the smartest in every room they're in or they're the most advanced, how do you find a new room? I'm like, that went hardcore there. So I'm going to give well, you that's, interesting. that's an interesting question. Um, I need to think for 15 seconds. Okay. On that one. <laughs> I'm going to keep going. I'll tell you why. I think I, I mean, you should always be seeking out people who are better at something than you are. So you are always challenged. So you are constantly having to lift your level of thinking to a, a new level. Um, but I, that's interesting because I've, I have, okay, I'll put it this way. I've out, I have outgrown some of my professional friendships. And there have been times when um, those professional friendships um, Huh. are not there just to serve you professionally. So you have to take a look at that person and how do they serve you in your life and how are you adding value to theirs? So it's really that combination hmm, blend um, of being able to give and take. So I, I, mean, I guess I'm always just looking around at those around me that I can then be a part of that are going to raise me higher and lift me and lift the way I think and behave and perform in a better and more professional way. I don't not love those that I was previously either with or working with. You love everyone. You just have to see the best way that you are served. It's almost like having a negative person in your life. Um, if you've got a negative person in your life, you don't stop loving them. Right. You just don't spend a lot of time with them necessarily. And certainly a, a different quality of time with them. Um, but I've, I've certainly, that, that's an interesting question. I will honestly need to give that a little bit more thought though, Melissa, okay? Yeah. And then like, like come back and you can, you can update us. Like, yeah. how do you find like people who are, are where you want to be? And then uh, something that you, you know what? Oh, go it ahead. seems like usually in, in business, mm -hmm. you can look around in either whatever business you're in and see those who are, I'll say, succeeding in a greater way. Now, that's all relative mm -hmm. because success right. is relative, but in a way that you're seeing it. So if I'm looking at something and saying, I'm at this, let's say, rank, and I see somebody at this rank and I want to get to that rank. You'll notice I'm firming my arm as I do that so that it looks really good there. Okay. <laughs> um, nice. Angles. Hello, thank you. Angles. Yeah, hello. Um, but if I want to find, if I want to be with that person at this rank, I'm going to watch what they're doing and I'm going to follow them and I'm going to try to follow in those steps in order to raise to that rank. Um, I remember when I was um, wanting to be in the top 10 in a company mm -hmm. and I would watch these top 10 and I kind of infused myself into their group. And I know they must have looked around and gone, what is she doing here? Now, I was top 40 in the nation, but I wasn't in that top 10 and I wanted to be top 10. And I thought the only way I'm going to get there is by seeing what they're doing, hearing their conversations, trying to understand and emulating in my own way what I saw them doing. Again, not necessarily duplicating, but replicating the best that I could. Watching what they were doing, emulating it and inserting it into my processes on a daily basis. So I think the best thing you can do is observe. You know, it goes back to that um, watch, watch and take it in. Um, don't just watch, see, That's really good. see what they're doing. Really look into what, not what, the what actions there's, there's, it's not the actions as much as what it's paired with. Well, and the understanding behind the action. 
Mm. why they did that what results did they get so oh that's why they did that um i think it's all that it's observation almost more than anything that you can then translate into action so your own, your own unique actions so good that's awesome but i want to remind you i want to remind everybody of something too yes. do it when you've got people in your lives that aren't necessarily serving you professionally mm -hmm. i've got a phrase i use it's called stinkers can be linkers and it really is true. Something that you're that you're seeing as a stinker, uh -huh. like you think they're a time waster, or they what are they doing in my life or in my business because they are not. I'm not even able to serve them well. Well, right. they could link you to something important. Oh, so I don't think God brings anybody or anything into your life for no reason. So always look for the the reason. Always look for the the why this is happening. Like that. And that stinker many times linked you. If you could say, "Wow, that was a waste of time," or "Oh shoot, why did I do that?" Well, they linked me to so and so or such, and I went, "Oh my gosh, what an incredible connection!" That stinker was a linker. So they're no longer a stinker. That's freaking awesome. Stinkers can be linkers. They can be linkers. Like that. That's right. All right. Oh, I like this. Gina said, I love your advice to replicate rather than duplicate. I feel like I spent too much time trying to be someone else in the beginning and felt oh. hurt. Gina, that's so darn true. And you know, Gina, I, it all goes back to, and this has become almost ad nauseum. Don't compare yourself. You know, I, don't compare your journey. If um, I look at my life, I look at Mel's life, totally different lives. I mean, Mel's having to go over and close that door and manage her kiddos and manage everything going on in her life. I've got me, my husband's upstairs, my dog's asleep. My life is way different. I am at the mercy of my daughter who can call me at any given moment and say, Mom, can you come over? And I'll drop everything and go if I can. So there, there, there are trade-offs. There always are. But again, it's never sacrifice, it's compromise. And I think that's something else you need to look at in your life when you're building your business. You're not sacrificing anything. You may be compromising some things, not to the degree of losing them, right. but to the degree of giving them their necessary attention and time, if that helps. Sure, sure. Um, okay, uh, you get the last lightning question. I'm gonna go okay. remind my kids. Okay. Really fast. I'll be right back. What do you want me to talk on? Uh, no. Uh, oh. Whatever's in your head. And then <laughs> your last question. Okay. Well, you know, I'm looking at the chat right now and I can see, um, oh goodness. Hi, Verity. How are you, sweetheart? My goodness. All the way from, uh, from Australia, right, Verity? Get my head on right. I think I'm correct. Um, and yes, hi, girls from Aussie, um, or from Oz, how are you? Um, but if you do have a question that you'd like me to address, please type it in chat because I'm looking at real-time chat right now. Um, I think it is Im important to control what you allow in your life, and especially in this isolation period where we are, I won't say at the mercy of, but at the mercy of and the respect to that we can't just walk out and away from it. Well, you can walk out your front door and get some fresh air. But literally, if you wanted to communicate with someone else, you can be at the mercy of social media. You can be at the mercy of what others are making available to you, not what you want to go and get yourself. So be cautious, protect your PMA, your positive mental attitude, and make sure you are only allowing goodness, not only as much as you can, goodness in. I seriously, don't watch the news. My husband laughs at me. He watches it almost 24 seven, but I, I can't do it. It just totally depresses me. We were watching a, a show on Netflix. I forget the name of it now, but it was so depressing. I was over at my daughter's. We were watching hoarders. Oh my gosh. If you ever want to get super depressed, no. I like the psychology behind it, but I can't watch it because it just, okay. It buries me. <laughs> Hello. Ah, there you go. Yeah, there you go. Be careful. Be cognizant of what you're allowing in your lives, what you're allowing in your children's lives. Because remember, they, they are watching you 24-7, and now you've got to watch them 24-7. What are they watching? Is there reality TV going on in your house? Sorry, get rid of it. It's not real. And it does tend to make you compare. It yeah. doesn't make you feel better about your life, seriously. It just makes all of life a little bit worse. So, Try to just do positive in, positive out, and, and control that. You do have control. So good.
I should walk away more often, huh? Now, honestly, we need to walk away more often. I really believe no, that. No, I because it lets all of this come out of you. Oh, you're so cute. <laughs> I walked away and I came back and I was like, oh, this is good. No, go ahead. All right. So what is your last lightning question for me about whatever, online business, anything? Um, on your Tuesday talks, where can people get connected to you and all that you do, Mel? Because you bring so, such wonderful information that is so relevant and so current. You're you're beyond current, um, and you make it you make it a point of of knowing everything in advance, which I think is phenomenal. Well, no more. All right. So actually, and we did not plan that. That was uh, no. I just got it. But that's what I have things like this for. If somebody wants to get on my email list, they can go to emailalt.com slash subscribe and that will let you get hooked in with me. And then I also have, uh, I do a lot through text. That's the best way for people to stay in touch with me. Um, because, and this is just like a little side note, uh, I went through an experience where I had built my entire online business on Facebook, not using it as a tool, but essentially it was my whole business. And one little algorithm change created a chain of events that resulted in losing tens of thousands of dollars worth of income because I was not connected to people beyond that. So one of the things that I teach people is build and use everything you've got at your disposal. And social media is one of those things. But you've got to uh, create multiple points of contact things that work for you, uh, which is why I don't have Facebook Messenger as one of my primary means of contact because it makes me want to die. My inbox is a mess, but my shout text messaging, my email service, all of that, those work for me and help me stay connected to people. So those are two ways you can connect with me. And that brings me to a lovely little spot here. Leslie, what? you have mentioned you have some stuff that you're going to be, you know, getting ready to uh, let us in on what's going on. What should people comment if they want to be on the inside track with what you're doing next? Um, <clears throat> I think they should comment next. <laughs> next. Oh, one of my no. favorite words because you need to keep moving on and you need to keep moving forward. So I would say comment next in the chat and that will keep you in touch with what we have planned and coming up very soon. <laughs> Because this was really fun. And I think that we should do it again. Yeah. We should do it again really soon. We should. I mean, a follow-up would be fun to do, Mel. Would be what fun. are you doing on Thursday night? <laughs> you know what? I think I'm free. How about you? Are you free Thursday night? I think I can be free. How about we get together again and we do something like this again? That'd be fun to do. But what if we take it to the next, next level? Yeah. I need to see if there are others who want to pop on with us and do a little lightning round where they, they can pick your brain and ask you or I a question. I think that would be fun. That'd be great to do because, you know, when you think about how many layers there are of information and topics there are that can be discussed, uh, they each kind of need their own opportunity. They do. They really do. do. There's just so much. So if you would like to uh, jump in on what's next, if you comment next, you're going to get two things. First of all, we're, I'm going to make sure that you have the link to join on Thursday night when we hang out. And we're going to, uh, I mean, there's going to be a Google form that you'll be able to fill out if you want to come on live with us. Like I might even just drop out, like there can be multiple people in here. You'll be able to like, kind of like, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen a hot seat interview. But um, they're amazing. And they help not just the person who's getting to interact and like pull all, the, oh, hold on, it's reverse. So pull all the awesomeness out of Leslie. Um, but everybody watching, like you just get so much from that, that synergy that, you know, it's just mm -hmm. special and amazing. So um, you'll get, uh, if you want to uh, apply to be on that, honestly, I'm going to pick and choose based on like what I think is going to bring the most value to the most people. But all the questions are going to at least be out there and can be um, used and excited. But then also, um, besides all of that funness, I almost forgot to come back. And Leslie, that Ooh. book, can you hold up that book for us? Yes, it was a it was a fun opportunity. Um, it's called The Change Six. I'll hold it up close so that helps. <clears throat> but what it is is it's a com it's a combination of about oh 25 different authors and each author 
or each, I don't want to call it an expert, each professional wrote a chapter in this book. It's called the Change Series of Books, and it's by uh, Jim Lutz and Jim Britt. I'll hold that up so you can see them as well. Jim Lutz and Jim Britt. And there are a significant number of authors. And then my chapter oh, there's um, is on my ACE philosophy that um, I have shared over the years. And it's about a 10-page chapter. And the book um, is a real opportunity to hear from all these different professionals in their fields on the insights into self-development. So it really is, um, I think, a wonderful book. Each one that I read from, I learn something new. And I co-authored this, gosh, I don't even know how many years ago it's been now, a few years ago anyway, and didn't do anything with it. I mean, once in a while I talked about it at Senegence. Uh, Joni even really gave me a green light if I wanted to advertise it. And I didn't do anything with it. But I do have about a dozen of those books left. And I donate um, the proceeds after cost to charity. So I am able to support. I really like um, Children's Cancer Society. Um, but there are lots of obviously wonderful and necessary, especially during this isolation time, yeah. food shelters. There are so many places that need our help and assistance. That's right. Yep. Well, now, Leslie has about a dozen of these books handy. Right. And then after that, she's going to have to order a reprint. So uh, they are $15 and all of the costs beyond like her actual cost that the, the proceeds uh, are donated to a charity of her choice, right. probably going to be uh, children's cancer uh, focused. And if you are wondering how to get it, there are two ways. The first is... One lucky winner is going to get an autographed copy of it. And do you like how I just, I, I didn't ask her about that. I'm just fallen told her right now to, to, to sign it and run a little something's on it. So you, one person is going to get that as a gift. It is our giveaway for this week. And um, the way that you <laughs> enter for that is you have to go back and you have to find the secret word. There's actually three ways, okay? So the first is you get the secret word and you have to wait till this is over and go back to the replay and you have to wait for the secret word to pop up. And then you text the secret word to this number, 833-730-2906. And that is one way to enter. Another way to enter is by sharing this fabulous Tuesday talk. And uh, in order for us to see it, you have to share it from a public um, profile page or whatever or share it to a group or share it privately if you prefer a screenshot it come back and put it in the comments so we can see it and that is an entry and then if you and please like authentically not spamming because we would never want to be a like we would never we would feel so crappy about that um but if you were watching this and you got something from it and you thought of somebody that you were like, oh my gosh, you would so love this. Tag them. Each person that you tag, that is another entry. So the other way to get the book, and remember, there's only like 12 currently available. The rest of the people will have to wait for um, that to come. Simply comment the word book. Comment book, the first 12. She will be uh, contacting you literally. We're just going to give you a quick payment info, way to get it. It's going to be that simple, easy peasy. I like low tech where I can do it. So comment next to get in on what's happening next and find out about Thursday. Comment book if you want one of those very few copies. And then remember when you text in the secret word or when you share our Tuesday talk, then you are entered to win um, the signed copy of Leslie's book. So yes, and big announcement, our winner from last week is Jessica Underwood Brown. She won to share, woo, woo, woo. and then she actually gets to take her uh, choice of three different prizes. One is a uh, jewelry based. I was a jewelry designer before this and I, I have a soft spot in my heart for beautiful jewelry. The other choice is the Synergist products that I love and represent. She can choose from that or she can take a 30 minute coaching um, session with me, which since I don't do much one-on-one -on -one coaching, that's actually something I only really do for giveaways or as part of big packages. So yay, Jessica, she can pick whatever she wants. So. I'm gonna have to wear the earrings you made uh, that I got from you last oh, time. Oh, that's right, which, oh, the blue The blue Swarovski, they were so pretty. I love those. I have yeah. a, I, I just think Swarovski, you can just, 
you can just tell they shine a little extra special. They do. They I do. Love them. And you do beautiful work. Well, thank you so In much. All that you do. Aww. Aww. Thank you. It's true though. Oh my gosh, so many comments that I missed. Oh, the books I'm pretty sure are gone. Um, oh. Becky, yes, you can share the YouTube link also. That went out via email if you're on my mailing list. If not, you're in my private client group, so I'll make sure you have that. So absolutely. Let me see. Let's see. So many people. Oh, Stacy, thank you for reminding me. Yes, if you share this broadcast, please do use, if you want to be certain that I can find you, um, besides adding a screenshot, use the hashtag Tuesday Talks with Mel, and that will ensure that you get entered. What would I do without you, Stacy? You have half my brain. You know, I met Stacy behind a trash can. Funny story. We were hiding. <laughs> That's why you should well, stinkers can be linkers. <laughs> <laughs> and then she turned out to be like the most brilliant mind I had encountered in forever. You, you know, never know. You never know who you're going to meet having an anxiety attack, hiding behind a, a trash can. That was oh my crazy. gosh. How there crazy. People everywhere. Um, all right. So I think that wraps up our time today. Leslie, thank you so much for doing this. Did you Thank have you for having me. It was so much fun. And Mel, I think we're just so like-minded. It makes it very easy as well. And um, now we have a date on, on Thursday. Is that right? Yeah, we have a date on Thursday. And everybody who comments next will be getting connected with us and will have the opportunity to um, fill out a questionnaire to see if they can be in one of the hot seats and um, really keep an eye on what is happening with Leslie because that Thursday night is not all. There is so much coming more sparkle fingers yay Lots right, of are excited about that throw us some fire to see us out go ahead and send us some hearts make it a little avalanche for us to go out by look at i see people already sending in the magic word and um Lots. questions and all kinds of fun things all right thanks everybody for joining us we'll see you Possibly, well, hopefully you'll come on Thursday for our very special edition. But then also I'll be back next week for Tuesday Talks. Who and what awesomeness will be here? Who knows? It could be anything. It could be anyone. It could, like, you don't even know. Don't and know. Thursday is just going to be some exciting announcements, right, Mel? Thursday is possibly going to be one of the biggest reveals and announcements that, like, for the last couple of years... For me, I mean, I don't know about you, but like, for me too, pretty freaking epic and awesome. Thank you everybody for sending us out with fire and love and flames. And we will see you very, very, very soon. Bye. Bye Mel. Love you. Love you.